Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the 31st week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know that what I shall do Uh, what I shall do so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another he said, And how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred cores of wheat. He said to him, Here is your promissory note. Write one for eighty. And the master commended the dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this parable of the uh, dishonest steward is actually going to go on for a couple of days. Today we have the parable, and tomorrow we have the application of the parable. So as we look at it today, we see that we have a dishonest steward. Now, this is an interesting comparison, and Jesus does this every once in a while. He takes something that is uh, kind of unique and a little bit different, and uses it as an application for how to live life, even though you're not supposed to follow the dishonest steward, but there's something about him that that you can learn from. It's the same with the parable of the unjust judge and other parables like that. And here we have a dishonest steward, and he has been caught. So he's going to not only lose his job, but he's going to be given an audit. He's going to be evaluated on how much squandering he really did. And so in preparing for that full accounting and making his master aware of everything, one of the things he began to think about was, what am I going to do when I've lost my job? How am I going to live? And he began to think, and he realized, I've already squandered quite a bit. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make myself indebted to my master's debtors. And so he set out to reduce the amount of debt for each of the uh, people that were indebted to his master. And so to one, the very first one, he asked him how much he owed. And he said, I, you know, I'm in debt for 100 measures of olive oil. And he basically had him rewrite the, the note for 50, reducing his debt by 50%. Well, I'd love to have that, wouldn't you, on some of the, uh, the bills that I have to pay. Well, here's another one where he owed 100 cores of wheat, and he says, okay, write it for 80. One was 50%, this one is 80% or uh, 20% off. Still not a bad deal at all. And interestingly enough, when it comes... To the end of the parable, it says that the master commended the dishonest steward for acting prudently or creatively, kind of um, making a way for himself in the future. He wasn't basically commending him for being dishonest. He was commending him for being creative, and, and that's the difference. Now, there are many schools of thought of what took place. One is that the steward actually had the authority to do this, that the master gave him that much responsibility that he could do this, and uh, it was just a part of his authority while he was still a steward. Another theory is that he was just taking his own commission 
and reducing the amount by his own commission. The only thing I struggle with there is the fact that the different percentages would not be consistent with having uh, a certain amount of, uh, uh, you know, of uh, extortion or what do you want to call it, where the or commission would be a better way to put it, I guess, where the uh, uh, steward had a commission on the sale. What really it looks like is that he just took advantage of his position, rewrote the uh, the indebtedness, and although the master was out a lot more money, still the master saw the creativity that was there. Kind of a uh, an interesting, interesting parable. But then Jesus summarizes it by saying, For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. So what he was really saying is that if those in the world can use what they have creatively to provide an advantage for the way that they're living, how much more should those who are in the children of light, that is those following God, should be able to creatively look at where they are in life and to, by God's grace, uh, be able to set Uh, a wonderful and powerful future for themselves. And we're not talking about a financial future as much as we're talking about being used by God in a powerful way for what lies ahead. A very interesting parable. We're going to continue this tomorrow. But uh, what we have here is a dishonest steward who creatively uh, prepared himself for the future by making him uh, indebted to those he was serving. And in doing so, would prepare that uh, after his uh, firing, after his termination as the steward of this man's property, he'd have a place to go. He'd have a home to go to. He'd have meals because these people see what a great service that he did for them. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as always, it's good to be with you on Day by Day. And by the way, today is a memorial. Today is the memorial of St. Charles Borromeo, a wonderful saint of the church. So I'd encourage you today to look him up and to determine ways in which he can be an inspiration to our lives, that we too can live our lives for Christ. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.